or for that matter belongs to which one. Just as each of human fragrance has its aura, has its fragrance, so to each master is that. No one has explained this as beautifully in a simple word than a 12th century Zen master and in 10 short poems he explains the entire journey of life beyond. It is called a story of 10 bulls. The first bull represents the energy, the search for the bull. In the pastures of this world, I endlessly push aside the tall grass in search of the bull. The bull is lost amidst the wilderness in the duality that surrounds us. I endlessly push aside the tall grass, the duality, the conflict, the scriptural injunctions, all these create a conditioning and barriers. And what am I searching amidst that? The bull. Following unnamed rivers, lost upon the interpreting paths of distant mountain, my strength failing and my vitality exhausted, I cannot find the bull. I only hear the locust chirping through the forest at night. The bull, the energy, the consciousness is lost. What need is there to search? Only because of separation from my nature. I fail to find him. In the confusion of senses, I lose even his track. Far from home I see many crossroads. But which way is the right way I know not. Greed and fear, good and bad, all these dualities entangle me in many ways. Now, Walking along the path, suddenly he discovers the footprints. Along the river bank, under the trees, I discover footprints. Even under the fragrant grass, I see his prints. Deep in remote mountains, they are found. These traces no more can be hidden than one's nose looking heavenward. Understanding the teaching, I see the footprints of the Buddha. Then I learn that just as many utensils are made from one metal, then I learn that just as many utensils are made from one metal, so too are myriad entities made of the fabric of self. Unless I discriminate, how will I perceive the true from the untrue? Not yet having entered the gate, nevertheless I have discern the path, the journey continues along the path. Now you begin to perceive the thing. I hear the songs of the night jungle. Sun is warm, the wind is mild. Willows are green along the shore. Here no bull can hide. What artist can draw that massive head, those majestic horns? When one hears the voice, one can sense its source. As soon as the sixth sense emerge, the gate is entered. Whenever one enters, one sees the head of the Buddha. This entity is like salt in the water, like color in the dye stuff. The slightest thing is not separate from the self. The slightest thing that we see is composed of the same stuff as you are made of. You are also being nourished by the dew drops, the clouds that are filled with water, they nourish you, the sun, the moon, mother earth, all these nourish you. Now he is catching the bull. I seize him with a terrific struggle. His great will and power are inexhaustible. He charges to the high plateau, forever the cloud mists or in an impenetrable ravine he stands. He dwelt in the forest for a long time, but I caught him today. Infatuation for scenery interferes with his direction. Infatuation for this scenery interferes with his direction. Longing for sweeter grass, he wanders away. 
His mind is still is stubborn and unbridled. If I wish him to submit, I must raise my will so that I can be on top. Now taming the will. The whip and rope are necessary. These are determination that I take a resolute determination. These are the whip and rope that are necessary. Else he might stray off down some dusty road. Being well trained, he becomes naturally gentle. Then unfettered, he obeys his master. The energy is being dead. When one thought arises, another thought follows. When the first thought springs from enlightenment, all subsequent thoughts are true. When the first thought springs forth from that state of enlightenment where you are one with the entire cosmos, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, we are made up of the same stuff. All subsequent thoughts are true. Through delusion one makes everything untrue. Delusion is not caused by objectivity. It is the result of subjectivity. What is the nature of your subjectivity? Has it experienced oneness all around? Oneness of all paths, oneness of all beings, sentient and insentient? Then delusion is not caused by objectivity you know. It is the result of subjectivity. Hold the nose ring tight and do not allow even a doubt to settle in you. Riding the bull home, he has tamed the bull now. Mounting the bull, slowly I return homeward. The voice of my flute intones through the evening. The voice of my flute intones through the evening. Measuring with hand beat the pulsating harmony, I direct the endless rhythm. Whosoever hears this melody will join me. I extend no magic. The words, when they are spoken, they create a gap. It creates a musical symphony. This struggle is over. Gain and loss are assimilated. I sing the song of the village woodsmen and play the tunes of children, embodiment of innocence. Astride the wool, I observe the clouds ever. Onwards I go, no matter who may wish to call me back. The bull transcended. Astride the bull I reach home, I am serene. The bull too can rest. The dawn has come, the dawn of new awakening. In blissful repose, within my thatched dwelling, I have abandoned the whip and the rope. All is one law, not two. There is only one law. We only make the bull a temporary subject. It is as the relation of rabbit and trap, of fish and net. It is as gold and frost, or moon emerging from a cloud. One path of clear light travels on throughout endless time. One path of clear light travels on throughout endless time. Both bull and self transcended, whip, rope, person and bull, all merge in loathe, they dissolve into oneness. This heaven is so vast, no message can sustain it. How may a snowflake exist in a raging fire? Here are the footprints of the patriarchs, the masters, you can see. The saints follow the saintly path. Ya ilahi ta abadka in silsila. This path of awakening may continue till eternity lasts. Mediocrity is gone. Mind is clear of limitations. I seek no state of enlightenment. Neither do I remain where no enlightenment exists. Since I linger in neither condition, eyes cannot see me. If hundreds of birds is true my path with flowers, such praise would be meaningless. If hundreds of birds is true my path with flowers, such praise would be meaningless. I appreciate 
your messages, the messages that have poured in, but these is to my path. All that comes along the path are meaningless. Reaching the soul. Too many steps have been taken returning to the root and the source. Better to have been blind and deaf from the beginning. Dwelling in one's true abode, unconcerned with that without, the river flows tranquilly on and the flowers are red. Dwelling in one's true abode, unconcerned with that without, all that is outside you are not bothered. River flows tranquilly on and the flowers are red. From the beginning, truth is clear. Poised in silence, I observe the forms of integration and disintegration. One who is not attached to form need not be reformed. The water is emerald, the mountain is indigo, and I see that which is creating and that which is destroying. The dissolution and creation are one. From one side there is dissolution, from the other side there is creation. Now the last one comes in the world. Barefooted, naked of breast, I mingle with the people of the world. My clothes are wrapped and dust laden and I am ever blissful. I use no magic to extend my life. Now before me the trees become alive. This is the state of living beyond enlightenment. The master does no magic, extends no magic, but whosoever comes within that energy field gets transformed or cannot remain without being influenced by the energy. The sun is catalyst, so he is a master, he remains a catalyst, he does not do anything. Sun is so far away, but in the presence of sun, acting as catalyst, something begins to happen to the flowers, the fruits and the entire cosmos and there is a different kind of a glow. Master is an energy field. His presence acts as catalyst and in that presence, if you are vulnerable, if you are open to that energy field, transformation will begin to happen even if he has does not say anything. My clothes are ragged and dust laden and I am ever blissful. I use no magic to extend my life. Now before me the trees become alive. Even all that was not pulsating with new life becomes alive. Inside my gate, inside my gate a thousand sages do not know me. The beauty of my garden is invisible. Why should one search for the footprints of the patriarch? I go to the marketplace with my wine bottle and return home with my staff. I visit the wine shops and the market and everyone I look upon becomes enlightened. I extend no magic. Simply my presence that I am, it creates an insatiable quest. I become your insatiable quest. In that an intense quest arises, how can I attain to this state of awareness? That is the way the flowers blossom. Each one of you is a flower of this garden of Eden that has to blossom to spread its beauty and fragrance. Now I will see that it happens. Whatever is written, that you have to attain to this much level of awareness, you will certainly attain to that, but journey must continue. Since day before yesterday, I was remembering that there is something different around the corner. I was remembering what had happened on 12th of May, but this day was reminding me again and again. Then yesterday morning I remembered, yes, it was 12th of May 1972 when this transformation happened. As a result, I decided, although in the preparation of that I was speaking of the enlightenment, the life beyond death, how one should enter into death, 
and also it was after when Hazrat Sheikh Nazim Raziullah Ta'ala Unu left this world, it was incumbent on me to speak on that master and through him share my insights into life and life beyond. Then this particular session was arranged.